If there's one cocktail that screams holiday season, it screams sitting beside a beach or a swimming pool, having a good time, it is the rum punch. Now the rum punch comes in so many different guises, probably nine times out of 10, not even called a rum punch. Bartenders, bars, hotels, restaurants, they'll come up with their own names for cocktails, but they all kind of categorize down into a rum punch. So the thing is, there's not a specific recipe for the rum punch, even though there are a few, mis- a few famous rum punch recipes out there, but what it does come down to is a formula. Now this formula breaks down into five very easy and simple components, but you follow the formula, you follow those ratios, and you're gonna get a banging, proper tasty rum punch every single time. Cocktail fans, welcome back to the Drink Stuff YouTube channel. We are your one-stop shop for all your cocktail needs, except for the booze. My name's Steve the Barman, and I'm just purely here for your cocktail inspiration to help you on your cocktail journeys. Now, as I've said, the ratio, the formula for the rum punch is so easy. The hardest bit about making a rum punch, the hardest bit is coming up with a name for it. I cannot name my cocktails for love nor money. So as long as you can count to four, actually probably five, but count to four is the big part of this, uh, you can make your own recipes, your own creations. So let's run you through it. I'm gonna kind of tell you, and then I'm gonna dissect each part uh, to kind of help you on your way. So the formula, or the little rhyme. Now, I don't know how where this stems from in history. I've never really looked at this. I picked this up from Ian Burrell, uh, the rum ambassador, the global rum ambassador. I picked this up from Ian Burrell in the early 2000s. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's pretty much the thing, and it's, it's written all over the interwebs quite a lot. Uh, But as I say, I don't know the history of it. I don't know who created it. It's just something that just really worked. So the formula or the the recipe, one part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak, and a dash of spice to make it nice. So to help you through, I'm gonna kind of create a, a rum punch with you on the fly here, but I'm gonna talk you through each component of this just so you've got ideas, because there is just like a million, and that's not an exaggeration, a million different ways that you could make this cocktail. Uh, And this cocktail goes very easily as a singular, as a one-off, or it goes very easily into a big punch bowl, a drinks dispenser, whatever you want. Now the crucial thing to get your head around in this is the part. As I said, one part sour, two parts sweet. What does the part refer to? Because this is a bit when I teach this, people will struggle to get their head around. So it's so easy, it's so, 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 simple. Your part simply refers to the measurement that you are using to make that cocktail. If you're making a one-off, a singular cocktail, then your part may be 15 mil. 25 mil might work, uh, but 25 mil is going to be a quite strong, be perfect for you guys at home. Uh, it will be a little bit stronger, but perfect for the home market. For, for, for pubs and bars, 15 mil would suit this better, and you'll find out why in a second. So, whatever your part is, and also, that could be, if you're making a big drinks dispenser, or a punch bowl or whatever, uh, a part could be the bottom end of a cocktail shaker, or a cup, or a mug, or or whatever. You just have to know what part you're, what measurement you're using, and just stick to that all the way through the cocktail. So whether it's 15 mil, or 25 mil, or a shaker, or or whatever you, you're you using, a glass, whatever. That is your part, one part, okay? So for this, for the purposes of this, because I'm gonna make one singular cocktail, I'm gonna use 15 mil. 15 mil is my one part. That is the most complicated bit of this whole recipe. So let's take you through the first bit, one part sour. You know, this isn't rocket science, sour. There's probably three that you would go to, lime juice, lemon juice, grapefruit juice. Uh, probably traditionally lime juice, that's gonna be your big one for this, all right? So, but whatever you use, um, it's completely in up to you. As I say, I've never seen this fail. As long as you stick to the, the ratio, the, re- the formula, I've never seen this fail. So, essentially we want one part sour. So for this, uh, I'm gonna do 15 mil of lime juice, just to kind of guide you through. And I've got, I've got five go-to recipes alone. Um, just for this, but there are just, as I say, there are millions of different things you go to. So at the moment, I've done 15 ml of lime juice, one part sour. Now the next part of the formula is our two parts sweet. Now, 
you know, I thought this would be a great opportunity to showcase, showcase George's, William Fox's brand new rainbow range of syrups in there. There needs to be yellow on George. Passion fruit, mango, what are we doing for yellow, George? What are we doing? Uh, banter, in banter. But um, the, I could pick out <laughs> any of like the hundreds of flavours of modern, of ODK, of William Fox we do here. There is no right or wrong. So obviously your two parts sweet is gonna be two, for me, two lots of 15 mils. So 30 mil. Now here's the cool bit with this. You could do 15 mil of strawberry and 15 mil of green apple. You could do 30 mil of strawberry. You could do 30 mil of raspberry, whatever. You could break that down, that two part sweet, you could break that down into one part um, of, oh, so splitting it in half. So you do, as I said, one part of strawberry, one part of raspberry. You could just do a full two parts of something. Whatever floats your boat. And don't think fruit as well. You could also go um, take like the morning, uh, sorry, the vanilla syrup, hazelnut syrup, cinnamon syrup, nutmeg syrup, all those kind of things will work in here. Nutmeg and mango, nutmeg and passion fruit, uh, winter spiced from morning, winter spiced uh, syrup, which got that hint of chili in it as well, coupled with a passion fruit or mango. Whatever takes your fancy, whatever does. Okay, so you want two lots of 15 mil, 30 mil of something sweet. Now call me funny, I didn't want to open those syrups because I've got no use for them uh, for the next couple of videos or something. I don't want them to go off, if you know what I mean. So I'm just gonna stick to stuff that I've already got opened here, uh, just for this. I don't know why, it's just like me. I don't like wastage, I don't like wastage. So I will open them in due course uh, and we'll go through them there. So just for this, just to demonstrate, uh, I'm gonna do 15 ml of uh, Monin's Falernum syrup, actually. So Falernum is like an almond syrup at the base with like um, other spices, nutmeg and cinnamon and a bit of citrus, a bit of lime in there, a bit of clove, a bit of ginger as well. It's kind of a nice sort of spice syrup there. So I've got, um, whoops, wrong way around. Uh, I've got Monin's Falernum syrup there. And then I kind of like red rum punches. Uh, so I'm just gonna do uh, 15 ml of grenadine in there. So that is my two parts sweet. And of course it goes without saying, if I haven't said it already, uh, any of the ODK purees, any of the modern purees, they all are sort of 50% sugar, 50% uh, fruit in there. They, they are your something sweet. So anything like that, the only difference would be in the Funkin purees, uh, the Funkin haven't got any sweetness to them at all. So you kind of need to balance your puree out with sugar syrup if you're going that direction. But the long life shelf staple purees and fruity mixes, they are your sweet. So now we move on to our three parts strong. Remember we've done one part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong is the next part of that. This bit really ain't rocket science. Your strong is your rum. And yes, you could translate this into any other spirit you wanted to as well. Let's just make sure they're all facing front. There we go. Um, Plantation smashes it for me as cheap, easy going, uh, but premium rum just works a tree. I traditionally always go for a darker rum in my rum punches, but white rums, flavoured rums, they all work. You can do a mix and match, same as the syrups. You could do 15 mil, 15 mil, 15 mil, so you've got 45 mil in total. You could do 30 mil and 15 mil. You could do 45 mil, whatever floats your boat. A, a little uh, hack here as well, you could do sort of 30 mil of a rum and then 15 mil of a nice overproof rum to give it that extra bit of kick completely and utterly up to you. It's gonna be some Larry Wise amongst you that are gonna do 45 mil for an overproof. Uh, you do what you want at home, you do what you want. But most bars, most pubs would go kind of down the route of uh, probably 30 mil and maybe 15 mil of overproof or something like that. But the world is your oyster. Whatever flavoured rum you've got, there are hundreds of flavoured rums out there now. Or if you wanna go dark rum, I am just going purely dark rum because I love that sort of like the rich caramel molasses notes that comes out in rum punches from dark rums in this. It's kind of what they're built for, the fun fruity drinks, dark rums. So I'm going for 45 mil. So three parts, three lots of 15s, 45 mil of my dark rum. And then that just leaves, well it leaves two bits, but so we've done one part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak. Your weak is your mixer. 
And again, there are flipping loads of mixes you could do here. Uh, I've just bought these in from home because I've got the kind of uh, the cocktail masterclass going at home, uh, going along for hen parties, and I use quite a bit of the passion fruit, Paul Star Martinis, obviously, mango in my sort of rum punches that I do for them. So I've just bought these in, they're opened, and that's what I'm going to do. A big favourite of mine is water. Plain old, all right, you might go bottled water if you're in a, uh, an establishment that's selling cocktails, but if you're at home, plain old water. I promise you, one of my favorite ever rum punch creations, so simple, so easy, one part lime, one part honey, and one part almond or jat syrup, so that's your two parts sweet, three parts, probably pineapple rum, but a nice kind of rum in there, plain rum, four parts water. I love that because water, you have to think back in the old days, especially in the Navy and stuff like that, but like the old days, they didn't have uh, juices or uh, the fizzy mixes that we've got these days, like ginger beer, look at all the, the fever tree stuff down there, all the tonics, all the double dutches, all the, the um, what's that brand? London Essence, Posh Britvik, all those pineapple sodas, you old Jamaicas, all that. They didn't have that back in the day. Water was a big, big player in this sort of cocktails. Don't be frightened to use water. I promise you, my recipe again, uh, one part lime, one part orgeat, and one part honey, so that's my two parts sweet, three parts rum, four parts water. Love it, still drink that, absolutely love it. So whatever you're going for with your mixer, whether you want to do four different juices, so 15 ml of each juice, whether you're doing two different juices, so you do 30 ml of each, bear in mind you want four lots of 15 ml, so 60 ml in total, or you could do 60 ml of one juice. It is completely and utterly up to you. This is how I say there are literally millions of combinations. Coconut water is another one you could do here. You could add coconut water in. There is no right or wrong. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to do mango juice here for this, uh, but I'm going to do, uh, so, uh, third, uh, where are we, 60 mil, so two lots of 30 mil in here. I've realised I've got my uh, jigger up the other end, so this is 25, this is 50, and another 10, there we go, I, f I forget it's the UK one, <laughs> not, not the, it's the 25, 50 mil one, not the 30, 60. Uh, so we've done 60 mil of mango juice in there, whatever juice floats your boat. I'll tell you what I want to do, what I want you to do now, uh, dive into the comments below your rum punch formulas. Hit me up. One part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak. What are you going for? Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know your rum punch recipes. So now we've got we've got that bit. The last bit is our dash of spice to make it nice. Now, uh, before I uh, I'll just set these up. Before I talk about these bitters, obviously spice could also be fresh spices cinnamon, nutmeg, you could grate some cinnamon, you could grate some nutmeg into your cocktail. Nutmeg in these, especially if you're kind of using orange, pineapple, coconut, those sort of vibes, fresh coconut over the top works amazingly well. But this is also where bitters come into play as well. Not forgetting, I didn't bring that from home, I forgot Angostura bitters up there. So Angostura bitters would be your, um, your obvious go-to. There, let's put those in some kind of order. There we go. Hopefully they're all facing the front. And hopefully I've brought in some different flavours to what I've done in a couple of previous videos. So you can kind of see some different angles going in here. So Angostura bitters, herbs, spices, secret recipes, a couple of dashes. A couple of dashes of any of these work a treat. So Angostura bitters in there. Uh, I've also got hibis uh, hibiscus, hibiscus bitters. So lovely, rich, rich fruit, hibiscus, amazing, and kind of sorrel flavors, especially out in Jamaica, those kind of vibes, um, really goes well in a rum punch, all right? Uh, I've got Fee Brothers there. I've brought in the toasted almond lime bitters to give you that extra kind of uh, lime essence, the oils from a lime, that's what those bitters, from the lime zest, that's what those bitters will kind of bring you in a cocktail. Uh, rhubarb bitters, lovely, there's plum, there's cherry, there's lemon, uh, grapefruit, cut molasses, what else have I got at home? Loads of different Fee Brother bitters. Um, possibly my favourite, or second, oh, I forgot one, didn't I? I forgot Miss Betty's bitters, pineapple and star anise bitters. I forgot to bring them in. They are brilliant. They're more for me, daiquiri bitters. These ones are more rum punch bitters, kind of cinnamon, allspice notes in there, nutmeg, amazing, amazing kind of tiki bitters um, there. So that's the Elamakuli tiki bitters, amazing kind of tiki vibes to any cocktails. And then uh, which order we got here? 
We've got the bitter bar stewards, should we say, uh, coffee bitters and cinnamon bitters in here. So that, while you could do fresh cinnamon, fresh nutmeg, grated over the top of your cocktail, you could always add bitters to the cocktail to give you that dash of spice to make it nice. So just off the cuff, I'm going for two things here. I'm going to do, I'm going to actually do a, a small pipette of these hibiscus bitters. Uh, to give us that sort of lovely kind of Jamaican vibe. So about, can you see that? About a quarter of a pipette there. There we go. Um, it's basically two pipettes, depending, depending how big the hole is when you do like the Angostura bitters and to do the feed brothers for a dash. But I would say two half pipettes, about the equivalent of like a, a really good dash-ish. Depending on, you see that these, these pipettes are slightly different. <laughs> the hole is slightly different to them. So again, I'll go for that much, but that's that's about a decent dash. Two dashes in your cocktail. Anyway, plenty of ice in there. You could flash blend. Uh, if you're gonna do this in a punch bowl, drinks dispenser, ice, give it a good old stir. But as this is a single cocktail, give it a good old hard fast shake. And then I'm just gonna serve it up in a bar of drink stuff, tiki glass. Uh, so I just do, Rub punches, they're all about the dirty pores. The dirty, sh I call them shaker dubs. I like to call them shaker dubs, but dirty open open gate pour, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that is just perfect. And then garnish wise, you know, this is where I didn't bring any in from home, but you know, your pineapple leaves, your pineapple fronds work well. We've got pineapple, we've got cherry, we've got lime, um, got a sprig of mint in there, whatever garnish loud and proud with the garnishes. That's what they're all about. The more Larry the garnish, the better. Hope you've enjoyed that. Let me know your recipes in the comments below. Dive into that cocktail up there if you want even more cocktail inspiration for your little cocktail journeys.